Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another activating show on Beyond the Ordinary. And tonight we've got, uh, I was just telling Anna Maria, my, all my guests were as easy, not as easy as activating. Again, activating is the word that keeps coming up for some reason right now. Um, it's just so pleasurable. It's so, there's so much flow in the energy with Anna Maria. And it's exciting for me also because her perspective and the way that she connects to this intelligence that she has access to reminds us what we can have intimacy with as well. And the guidance that comes through the images, the connection into self as relation to today, the natural world and our alliance with it. Um, it's just so profound. And again, I truly believe that we're being awakened, shaken awake, activated, and being led to a stream of consciousness that lives within us as reflected by our natural world, as by the animals as they show up, as the rocks and the trees, as Anna Maria has come on the show before. And so today's call, I just, I know it's going to be a continuation of extraordinary. Um, as again, we go into activating our sacred alliance with the natural world. Um, and Anna Maria, again, she's been on the show a lot of times. And for those of y'all who don't know, I'm going to read her bio uh, just so you can get caught up to speed and caught up to the energy. So Anna Maria is a natural energy reader, an interpreter of sorts, and she lifts the veil between what's happening in the 3D world and the energetic patterns behind it. So as a multi-sensory intuitive, she's able to tune in and see places where your limiting beliefs are getting you stuck in old ways of being and showing up in the world. Anna Maria has a profound connection with nature and animals and specializes in working with them because they act as mirrors to our inner landscape and help us make shifts that on our own, we wouldn't do. She's also a shamanic practitioner, a certified intuitive strategist, and serves on the faculty of Academy for the Soul. And Anna Maria, it's with that, that as always, just welcome. And it's such a gift to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. And Anna Maria, I can't hear you right now. We'll, we'll get to unmuting you here in a second. Can you, let's see if we can find that. And we'll catch up to, no, we can't hear you yet. Mm -mm. No, here, we were, I was hearing you earlier. That's so odd. And y'all wait a second here as we try to determine what is causing Anna Maria's, it said that you're muted on our side. So there's something in your phone settings um, that has you muted Anna Maria still muted i'll let you know i'll give you a thumbs up when you come on i think that was you coming on <laughs> yeah, there you are hi so we've had the most interesting um technology pieces going on here uh, where we've had to switch modalities. At one point, people saw two of me for a while and you could not hear me in one and hear me in the other. So we are going to go with this. I just want to study this so that I don't. And it started earlier in our side also where the settings went right. So I had to log off, go back in. And that may even affect some of the participants that haven't been able to come back on. So. Welcome to Mercury Retrograde. Not that we <laughs> not that we give ourselves to it, but that we acknowledge that sometimes the energy is just out to do different things. Yeah, um, and we try not to be in resistance around it, right? Like it just is what it is. And this is big stuff that we're learning here and we're remembering. And so relax, go into it. It's not the end of the world. It's not comfortable for those of us who, you know, do this professionally and stuff, but it is what it is. So we lean into it. We call on nature. I know we're going to have a weird video thing going on here too, because I ended up turning myself sideways. So no, you look you great right now. 
You look it's better for me to go back the other way. I'll totally you're perfect do that. right now. This is so good. And actually, I love that we get to see your fireplace and whatever is hanging from the middle there. What what feather is that? So those are um, that's a hawk feather, and then it's surrounded by horse tail. Our horses sometimes their tail hair will come out, and it's so beautiful when you get a bunch of it and you can put it together. Oh my God, I can feel the energy in that. It's so amazing. It's super great. <laughs> oh. And Maria, let's get into this because it's calling so strongly. I can feel, again, it's, if I sound like a broken record for some of y'all who tune into every show, it's, I just know this has purpose and I want to get Anna Maria's perspective on it as well. Because in the last few weeks, and it, it, it seemed to have calmed down in a new moon that happened last Monday. And, but the week before I was feeling like this pulling into like a new harmonic and attuning into for lack of a better phrase, a higher octave of energy that I had access to, but my physical body trying to expand into it. And also the density of what I had to do, what I'll call in the mundane world to work in the computer, deal with bank accounts, deal with email lists and all that, and how that was kind of keeping me stuck in the mud because the energy wanted to move faster. And I felt this push pull anxiety kind of happening, spinning like a top and for me, it feels like an attunement that's taken place that can seem like I can have profound dreams at night or I can feel so ungrounded in the day or other days. I just feel like I'm just like rolling and things are happening and then it stops again and it starts again. And what's been your experience um, with these types of energies and what are you sensing in our natural world and, and that attunement or awareness as well? Well, that's a phenomenal question because, right, like that's the everyday pieces that folks are experiencing. And just like everything, right, it's multi layered, it's multi dimensional, even in what's going on, what's um, unfolding. So we've got an amping up of the etheric energies overall, but then we've also had this piece with the sun, right? And there's some solar flare activity going on. Uh, you know, people are concerned about electrical grids, things like that, but that so affects our physicality and also our, as we're in our energetic expansion is affected. And so what I've learned when things start to go absolutely wacky like that, or you feel like you're being pulled in these multiple directions, or you feel like you're stuck in molasses is another one, right? Like, you know where you need to be going and you just can't seem to get there. And oh, yeah. so what I found is that's actually our electrical systems saying that they need a reboot, right? Like we have to turn off our devices at times to restart them. So they get the new surge of energy that's going on. And what we get is called back to the earth. So grounding is so important. If, um, you know, plus we're in Mercury retrograde, let's not forget that too, right? We just entered a couple of days ago. And so those pieces, like you said, it's not that we're just like, oh, it's just Mercury retrograde and we give away all our power, but we have an understanding and we have um, some compassion for ourselves that we're up against it in a different way maybe even in a bigger intensity than we normally feel. And what I've learned time and time again from the trees, from the animals, from the rocks, is when we're having those experiences, we need to ground, we need to be in nature. If you can be barefoot out in nature, at least 15 minutes, right? Like some folks it's hard, so five, but longer, you know, if you can do 30 to 60 minutes, that is going to reset your whole system. It's also going to help you deal with the amped up energy around you. Uh, I had noticed some issues <laughs> kind of like this with some electronics, uh, some wireless keyboards and headsets that just weren't working the way that they needed to and operating sporadically. And so I took a breath and my team was like, get outside, right? And so I did, I did it for, I really only had a short period of time, did it for 15 minutes. I came back in, turned everything on and it was fine. So it's, it's these pieces where there is the energy around us and within us that is trying to find its balance, trying to find that homeostasis and it throws us off. And we, you know, like, because we're human and it happens, we freak out and we're like, oh no, right? And then we cause it, we intensify the energy even more. 
and it creates a bigger, what I call an energetic knot that we can't kind of get by. <laughs> Right. Well, it's it's also interesting because we forget our history and where we've and we've been through components of this before, but it comes up and it's kind of hitting us. And if we can just slow down and relax, it's like, oh no, it's everything's gonna be okay. We've been through different versions of this. Perhaps we're more empathic, perhaps it's a little bit higher octave, but we've attuned to it as well. And so even being in the awareness that even though this is happening in our experience that we can just also just slow down, like you talked about earlier, we slow down into it, that that there is an emergence of, for me, it's a trust that this is really happening for us, not to us. Yes, that's the perfect Mm. shift of the energy, you know, like just that piece, this is happening for us, not to us, but we freak out, right? Because we don't have this point of experience where we remember this, right? not right now. And so we have a point of reference for freak out and, oh no, that, you know, what's going to hit the fan. We have so many points of reference for that, but we don't have a point of reference for, oh my God, something amazing is happening. And Mm. we get to be a part of that. Right. So when you talk about activating, again, getting into those points of reference also, and we're talking about the natural world, what does it mean to you to activate our alliance with the natural world? And how do we do that and why does it matter? Right. So there are these bigger pieces, right? Where we really get into our intentions and the energetics of an activation, but it all starts with awareness and with that intention, we have to start there before we go into the rituals and the ceremonies and the practices and the protocols of activating and almost like turning on that energy, um, like a conductor. But we have to start with realizing that oneness consciousness, that unity consciousness, and move that natural world from the backdrop, the background of our everyday life to these are our allies, right? Like this this is our kin, you know, the trees, the rocks, the plants, the water, the elements, all of these um, allies are there to source us. But again, due to the contracts, due to the way that we played this game out, it's, they're not going to intrude on our free will. And so we have to step into a conscious awareness of our alliance, Mm. meaning our connection with the natural realm in all of its forms, because it's life force energy embodying in all these different ways. And we are part of that because we are nature and we forget that. And we think that we have to do it all by ourselves. And that's when things get hard. And so when we remember that we're in an alliance, it shifts. Mm. I think it's really fascinating also because a lot of us have been encultured in a way that we believe that these relationships with, again, these natural forces that, that we really are in intimacy with, they've been fantasized. They've been created into movies, created into mystical books that were children's tales and all that. So it's, it's somehow separated us through, oh, that's just a kid's thing, or that's something that they wrote about in those books for entertainment, but there's a real world you have to live in. And so while well-intended and as kids, we can feel how perhaps alive it was, somehow the truth of those tales got um, diminished through, through fables or stories or something that was outside of us. And how it do we did. And the other piece is it separated us from the value and the power of our imagination because we got dismissive of it. Oh, that's a child's story. Oh, that's imagination. And so what's interesting, if you're trying to separate an infinite being from their power source, tell them that 
they can't create and take away their imagination, right? And what do we do when little kids have an active imagination? Well, in our house, we treat it very differently, but in the collective, in the mainstream, you know, we try and talk some sense into them. And so then when we become adults and we start to remember and we want to enter into this collaboration, into this alliance, we have a hard time because we're afraid we're making it up. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that that our imagination, that place within our psyche that allows us to step into an impossibility, that is crucial to us stepping into this alliance and these magical, mystical experiences. But if those that run everything can keep us away from that and keep us dismissing our knowingness, well then game over, right? Like it's a whole different game at that point because we don't remember who we truly be and we don't trust what we do think is coming in. So I believe that imagination is the first step into cultivating that relationship. And it's not about you making everything up because there's ways to test the information that comes in. And that's very important. Uh, we want to have a healthy dose of skepticism, but right. we don't want to be dismissive of everything either. So we want to really bring those critical thinking skills into these other realms with us. And they allow us to then intuit, interpret, and understand the messages that are coming through to us that are so helpful in us moving forward in our own lives, but collectively as well. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you work with people to activate that? Because even when there's a wanting to believe, and I use that very specifically versus a real belief, because sometimes the doubt is like, ah, eh, I'm going to kind of play with this, but there's something within the being that doesn't really trust or believe it. And it's like, how do we, how do you teach people to get past that breaking point where it's active and not this thing where they're kind of like dabbling, kind of hoping that something might show up and not really carrying the belief that it will? Yeah, well, that it, that is a great question, first of all. And it's multi-layered. It's multi-dimensional as well, because we do have this lower thinking mind that's got the skepticism and we don't want to lose that, right? Because we don't want to be falling for just weirdo yeah. stuff, right? Like wackadoodle stuff out there that leads us down, um, you know, some bizarre rabbit hole that we, that isn't of a high vibration. And so what, how, when I'm working with people, I believe that we need to do these energetic activations, right? And then we need to work with mind management because what happens is we do an activation and things start to shift or things start to get connected that we need to have these experiences. But then something from the 3D shows up and we go into the questioning and we go back into the dismissiveness of it. And so we undo what we just did and we actually re-ingrain the disbelief. So we have to work with the energetics, we have to work with mind management as well to work with that so that we can shift what we're looking at, how we're looking at, and the questions that we're asking of it. So when I'm working with people, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, we're creating containers, right? So in this space, in this container that we're creating, like, let's say in this discussion tonight, this is our container. So we're going to be already expecting magic to come in. We're already going to expect that that's going to come in. Now, we, we're not just going to believe it right off the bat, no matter what, but we have a container to hold it because if we're, when we're dabbling, we don't have a container. We're playing psychic guessing games, right? And, and when we do that, we've got a 50, 50 chance of getting it right or getting it wrong. And what that does though, to the wiring in our brain, because then our neurology is so important to us being able to have these mystical experiences, to be able to really have this back and forth two-way conversation with the natural realm. So we need our brain on our side 
But when we're just dabbling and not being serious about it and not really going through a process of activations that really allow the energetics to take place and then can then working with the mind babble that's saying, yeah, but yeah, but when we don't have that in place, then we just stay floundering and we don't know. And, and it's safer for us to stay in the disbelief than to lean into the possibility. Yeah. Now talk to us about the difference between being too serious in it and opening up playfulness to actually activate it because those are, they're really polar opposites for access. Yeah, it is. And so we have to, again, you know, because we've got this lower thinking mind and it really has to do with the mechanics of intuition, of intuitive energy, of energy, our energetic channels. So when the information comes in, so when the universe is talking to us, when life force is talking to us and what are, whatever form that may be, you know, a rock, a tree, a dog, an angel, whatever, you know, our higher selves, it comes in on that intuitive side of our brain, right? In the physical brain, our lower mind. And it shows up in symbols and images and feelings and colors and smells. And, you know, there's not language that's necessarily attached to it. And so it turns it over to our analytical side of the brain. And when we ourselves have gone through the activations and we are in balance, right? We've stepped into this, we have a balance there. So then that lower thinking mind actually becomes the divine servant and helps to put it together. It helps connect the dots. Oh yeah, that image, it means this for us, or it evokes this emotion or this feeling, which lets us know, keep going ahead or oh, you know, maybe step back, you know, let's look at this another way. But when we're not in that space where we've done the activations and we've learned, we're learning about the mind management aspect, what happens is all that intuitive stuff comes in and that, that analytical side of the brain becomes the bouncer. And it's like, show me your ID. Where'd you get that information? Cite your sources, you know, and the intuitive side of the brain goes screaming off like, oh my God, it's the interrogation, right? So we have to come into a space again, when we create these containers of like this, us being together here, you know, you know, working in, in one of my courses, being in one of my private sessions, right? Like those are places that are little containers or when we're doing our daily practice, we're in that container. And so we're able to set aside the doubt for the time so that the information can come in that analytical side of the brain can start to piece it together. It's like a cosmic scavenger hunt. You get one little piece and then the next clue and then the next piece comes in and you start to put it together like a puzzle. And then when we step outside of that, we can bring some more analysis to it. But the truth is once we're outside of those initial hits, the lower thinking mind starts to try and fill in the gaps. And that's when our accuracy in our interpretation starts to drop. So we learn to ride those energetic waves in that container with more mastery, more mastery, more mastery so that we can start to trust more and more. And we do wanna question what comes through, but it's a balance, right? Between the playfulness, the openness, and then, all right, I don't want to be self-delusional, right? I don't, I, that's not my, that's not my point here. I'm not trying to escape reality. I'm trying to integrate all of the realities into this human experience. And I think that's so important also of the critical mind also, and, and the discerning mind, if you will, because that's really a process through which we, we receive we assimilate and we actually embody. So there's through that critical mind that is really in alliance with the heart, with the higher thinking, with our higher self, it allows the process of embodiment to really land in safely through the cells and our sympathetic nervous system starts giving way to the parasympathetic. And so our connection from that and how it all serves is so beautiful. But again, we have to realize, like you're saying, when we're in that, the judging, when the bouncers coming in, wanting to, you know, kick everybody out, um, that really should be at the party. So it's it's so interesting how it comes in. There's a couple of terms that you use that I want to get into because they're, they stimulate my mind. And it's, it actually, 
excites the mind for greater access. And one of the things that you talk about, and, and there's two, again, they're really exciting for me um, for this call, but you, you talk about a sonic connection that we have with plants. What do you mean by that? Oh my goodness. So we know just even based on the color spectrum, right? Like there's only a certain range that we can actually see visibly with our eyes, right? It's the Roy G. Biv. That's what we can see. But there's more that's there than just that small portion of the color spectrum. And this is true the same for harmonics. So for what we can hear, we only hear within a very small range of what's really going on around us all the time. And so plants, grass, trees, the plants in your garden, uh, the wildflowers, they are always constantly emitting harmonics, frequencies, vibrations but they're outside of our audible range as humans, right? Like the animals hear it more than we do, but still it's outside of this audible range for us. And so it's easy for us to say, oh, well, that's just a thing, an inanimate object. That's just a tree or a rock or, or you know, a plant. But what we've learned is that there are ways that we can harness that vibration and translate it into audible tones that are within our spectrum. So um, it, it all started in Domenher, which is an eco-conscious village in North Italy. And they've been studying plant consciousness, plant intelligence for decades, right? Like I, I believe we're going on 50, 60 years at this point. And oh. they have been able to uh, create a machine that, that I'm fortunate enough to have and to have been trained on that you can, I ask a plant its permission and you put a probe into the soil where the roots are and a clip onto one of the leaves. And it, this, this completes the circuit and allows you to hear the bioenergetic field of the plant that it's giving off all the time. And it's in musical tones. So it is like a music that we get to hear. And what's really cool, right? Like, is we realize once you hear that, once you experience it, it changes the whole game. Cause you're like, holy crap. I knew. And I said there was more going on that than meets the eye, but now I just experienced it. And oh. it, it changes that for us. And we can't go back to nature just being in the background. And then it goes beyond that because they did studies with this plant music in, in hospitals in, in Northern Italy. And they found that the patients who were exposed to the plant music for just a short period of time, maybe 20, 30 minutes a day, were released from the hospital three days earlier on average than those who weren't exposed to that plant music. And so this all of a sudden opens up all these other possibilities of plant medicine for us being delivered harmonically. Yeah. And even if we're not using it medically, for us in our remembrance, right? And our energetic healing and our energetic expansion and opening up to more possibilities. So that has been such a gift to reveal that there really is more going on than meets the eye. That's amazing. How can we attune to that harmonic individually? We don't have a machine. We're not hearing the song, if you will, in the way that you threw you can through this machine or intuitively because you're so attuned to the natural world. How can, I, I want to say average person, but that's not correct either. How can someone um, align to that vibrational symphony that you're talking about? Well, this is that part where we can calibrate our energy, my, my great Dane Astro is right here. So you might hear him and or see a nose coming here. So all the animal lovers are <laughs> going to be really excited here for a minute. He's super excited. There's um, some animals moving outside and he thinks that he should, you know, go be with them, <laughs> but he's here helping us right now. So, um, so it's about calibrating our energy field and it's about raising our vibration as humans so that we can connect with these higher vibrations that are coming through the natural realm 
that have this information for us that help us calibrate our energetic field to all of these frequencies, all of these harmonics that are coming through and to us all of the time. So there are things we can do, like we started talking about grounding and earthing, right? That is huge because when we're in nature, we're flooded with those negative ions and we're flooded with those high vibrations that help us remember who we truly be. And more importantly, especially when we're talking about self-doubt, right? Because everybody in the human form, it's part of the human condition. And so we learn how to be with that in a different way. And the more that self-doubt is up, the more time we need in nature, because what's actually happening is all the other frequencies, all the other voices of the humans and the synthetic not noise, really, I was going to say voices, but well, I guess the AI now at this point, those synthetic voices are coming through and it confuses us and we forget who we truly are. And when we go out in nature, we remember nature yeah. helps us remember. Hmm. Yeah, nature is more powerful than any 5G network that's out there. Well, and the thing is, is all technology yeah. is a pale, pale yeah. replica of what we as humans can do. So it's great to utilize technology like this. It's great that we can work with technology to um, make these connections, but we don't want to replace our humanness with these artificial intelligences because they are a pale copy of what we as humans are really wired to be able to do. Yeah, and I think that it's, I mean, if anything gets said on today's call, if we just remember that, so many people that I hear um, worried about technology, worried about social platforms, worried about the EMF fields and what it's causing to us, worried about radiation. It's like the human technology and our connection to the natural world, it's, it's so much more masterful and intelligent than those things that have been created. And so for me, it's an aspect of, again, we're acclimating beyond those energies. And as we do, we learn how to use those technologies for our benefit rather than something that seems to be taking away from us. Um, Absolutely. No matter how it's being propagated, right? Yeah. Right. And anytime we're in that energy of fear, right? Like I'm afraid the technology is going to do this. We're on the wrong track. We're totally yeah. on the wrong track. Hey, could you help me by sitting down? Maybe that would be way more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sweet bear. Um, anytime we go into the fear, we're on the wrong track because that's the answers aren't there. We make poor decisions. I mean, even again, back to our neurology, our IQ points drop when yeah. we're in fear and under stress. So we're not making good decisions. And what we want to remember is we don't want to push against anything, right? Like resistance, it doesn't work. So we want to find a new way to be with, harmonize, mitigate those um, undesirable aspects of the technology that we're concerned with, right? Because there are real concerns, but we don't want those concerns to come up and have them create the fear because we're not going to make good decisions from that. And we go into an us and them, and right. then we've lost our power. And so we want to be in that space where we are, you know, what else is possible here? What else can we remember? And that's when these, you know, leading edge technologies like plant music come in and help us reharmonize uh, or give us the downloads and the inventors in our society, the downloads to work with life force energy that's everywhere to help harmonize any harmful kinds of energies that might be there. I just, I don't believe in living in fear about anything anymore, right? Like whatever they are doing out there, they can do. I'm not letting that into me. I'm not choosing that as my reality. And I'm going to use whatever it triggers in me as a way to clear and heal at another level, but I'm not going to fall into the same old narrative of I'm just a puny disempowered human because that is so far from all of our truth right and there's other intelligence that's coming in also i want to get into that in a second um before i do because i want to get into your awareness of this which excites i haven't heard it in this way and it's so exciting for me because i'm 
I'll, I can get into this can be a whole show, but before I get into that, guys, we're going to get into Anna Maria's special offer in a little bit, not just yet, but I want to make you aware that Package B, the special offer includes a one-on-one -on -one session with Anna Maria also. And if you know that you want one, which I highly recommend, it's like your connection for me is so pure and so just on point. It's it's really some of my favorite sessions that I've received and I've received lots of sessions. Um, and so I highly recommend it. If you know you want to book, um, go into the special offer, book it now so you can book now rather than later, unless you want to wait. Um, but I wanted to make that available um, so that you're aware. And April put the link in the chat box so you can find it. Um, and this topic about our connection with our shadow animal energy You've got to tell me more about that. That's just like, yes. What is that? My whole my whole being lights up. Right. Well, here's the thing. Like everybody talks about their power animals, right? Like, oh, <laughs> eagle or hawk or bear or squirrel or whatever, right? But we don't talk about shadow animals. And no. shadow animals are the ones who they actually have the potential to become a power animal for us. And so they're the animals who bring up those intense energies in us, typically fear or, you know, some kind of being scared, but it can also, you know, the lions, tigers, bears, creepy crawlies kind of thing, but yeah. it can also be, again, it's an intense energy that's triggered in us. So when we see bad things happening or unjust things happening to animals around the planet, right? It brings up an anger. It brings up a rage because we're like, this is not okay. Or our aging or dying animals, right? Like it brings up a fear and a sadness and we don't want to deal with that. And so we, we try and push it away. And that is so disempowering uh, to the animals for first and to us. And so there's a different way for us to be with all of this that actually shifts the energy from disempowering to a power animal. So these shadow animals have us take a look at things that normally we stay distracted by the emotional reaction that we have and we don't go any further, right? Like I've had that uh, experience with spiders. I used to be just petrified of spiders, like to the point where I couldn't even run and scream. I would just be paralyzed until someone could come in and take care of whatever it was. Wow. And so when I shifted my understanding of what that was triggering in me and for me, it allowed me to step into a place of empowerment and spiders, they uh, symbolize, you know, looking at what you're weaving and mm -hmm. would you want to encounter this again? Well, when I was in my time of fear of spiders, I was so in my head, right? And and in fear about what I was creating, the world around me, you know, the possibilities that I couldn't see that were there. And it didn't allow me to step into my brilliance to be in my expansion, right? It's like a pale comparison of who I truly be when I'm living in that space to now, <clears throat> I just had a, a funny thought about it. Yes, last night I went to go let I think the cat out, you know, I'm the personal assistant really for all the animals here because I have the thumbs and I went to go let the cat out and I went to <laughs> touch the doorknob and there was a spider there and it startled me, right? Cause I didn't expect to see something there, but I wasn't in fear. My first thought was, oh, I need to help this creature get to a better place, right? Cause he's not going to find food on the doorknob and yeah. he's not going to survive very well. So I was able to um, tell him first, you know, I'm, I'm going to be helping you here. And I kind of gave him a picture of what I was going to do. And I've learned that they see that, right? Cause they're telepathic and they get that. And so I was able to relocate him and then ask myself, oh, you know, what am I weaving? What have I been thinking about the last three minutes, three hours. And are these thoughts that when they come into manifestation that I would want to encounter again? Well, they were actually, it was really good. And it was, it was a good, it's a good vibrational check, right? For myself and for all of us to use, to see if we are, because we spend so much time asking, very little time listening. And, but really being intentional about what we're creating Maybe we do five, 10 minutes a day, maybe 30 if we're listening to a manifestation audio or something, but then the rest of the day, we're beating the drum of all the things we don't want and all the yep. things we don't have. And so we have to learn in the animals and nature 
help us remember because it's all based on energy. Everything is energy. And when we start to shift into that remembrance of that and being intentional with our energy, everything changes. Mm. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's such a great concept. I'm so curious. And, and again, just for personal reasons, I, I live in this beautiful island where there's no poisonous anything except centipedes. If you get bit by one of these thick centipedes, it's like you can be hospitalized or, or even worse. Um, and they're repulsive. What's the shadow of the centipede? Right. I, so, I see them every once in a house. It's like, oh, they're nasty. It's like it's <laughs> yeah, the creepy crawlies, right? Like they freak us out, and then you feel yeah. like they're on you for like hours afterwards, right? right? So when we've got an animal that brings up that intense, like repulse, I'm repulsed by that, right? Like all those legs yeah. and the thing is moving, and you know, like ah, and we want to look at those things, those shadow aspects in us where we are repulsed, whether it's by our own behavior, by things going on in the world, it brings that up when we've got um, some kind of an insect or an animal even that has venom, right? It's mm. pointing to external toxicity, right? So where are things in the outside world bringing in those low vibrations for you, bringing in that toxicity? Mm. And so it's asking us to look at that, right? Like I've, I once had um, a black widow spider fall right in between my legs and my lap when I was wearing shorts. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, same thing. Like that'll send you to the hospital and especially with sensitive tissue, like it was so close to, and it was happening during a time that I was going through <clears throat> leaning into clean eating, mm. but I hadn't been working with my brain. Right. So my body's getting into alignment. My body's coming back into balance but I'm still creating more of the same, right? And so I had to take a big, long look at the toxicity of my thoughts and the beliefs that I was having based on what other people were saying or telling me, and then what I was internalizing. And when we come into that awareness, we can shift these situations again, so that they are power situations instead of one that takes us out. Mm -hmm. Oh, such a great interpretation. Thank you for that. And again, to work with them, that, that consciousness, and again, the shadow aspect, because I, I'm a big proponent, it's like, we're bringing everything into balance, both the light and the darkness within us. And so by integrating the intelligence of all of it, and bringing it into balance, homeostasis is where we find our, our true power source. And, and from there, various forms of creation can take place through the integrity of that, rather than by the push pull of an energy that's at war with itself. Um, yes. And that resistance, right? Anytime we're fighting against, pushing against, we're on the wrong track. It's yeah. not about killing off those shadow aspects in ourselves or others. It's about loving them back into wholeness. Those aspects have a deep, deep rooted understanding of us at a very primal level. And that's a key, that's key, that's gold in terms of information for us to step into our healing and to really come into our wholeness. But instead, something unwanted happens. In this case, it would be an insect or an animal that is scaring us, right? You know, and we get distracted by the reaction and the story that we tell about it. And so we totally miss an opportunity to step into some healing, some enlightenment, some expansion, because we're so, we've got a well-worn path to all those limiting beliefs, and we don't quite have a well-worn path to our expansive beliefs. And that's where nature can help us remember. And the more time we spend with nature, in connection with nature, the more we wear that path in that direction. And so all we have to do is think I'm going to go be in nature and it all starts to shift for us, right? Like here, if I'm acting squirrely, <laughs> James is like, how long has it been since you've been outside? <laughs> you know, he knows <laughs> like my balance comes from that. I, he's like, maybe you should go talk to some trees or something. And so he knows if, if I'm doing that, I'm in a different belief pattern, you know, like there's not enough time. I can't get it all done. And so I've chained myself to my laptop in my office or whatever. And that is not going to produce the results that I'm looking for truly. 
from creating a whole different possibility. And so I have to have that time in nature. It's crucial. And it's not just me, all humans, we are nature. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to look different for each person, right? Because I'm, I'm the barefoot girl with the messy hair, usually, that has been outside all the time. Uh, versus some people, I have a friend who's like, she won't even take her shoes off outside on the grass or anything like she she's an indoor kid. And so, but she still needs a connection to nature, right? But it looks different for her than it would look for me, where I'm like all hugging on the tree, laying under the tree, you know, the dogs laying on me, you know, all the whatever it is. So we have to go with what feels right for us. And we have to lean into that. And for some people, it might just be viewing nature on a YouTube video. And that's mm-hmm. fine, right? Your brain doesn't know the difference. Right. <laughs> you may not be getting those same uh, negative ions flooding, but you could work energetically and you could call those in. This is where the intentionality and using and working with our imagination to even call up a possibility that we could then step into that's where that starts coming in so no matter where we are no matter where we live no matter where we are on our journey it starts with calibrating our energy to that energy field of the natural realm because that's the portal yeah i want to get into q a here in a little bit but i think this is so important because part of your work that i really resonate with just tremendously or your being i can't even call it your work your being and, and the example that you just emanate through that invites us into the wisdom of it is that through this attunement that happens in a very physical realm as well, we actually begin to um, awaken access to the shamanic realms as well and the intelligence that's there. So as you tune into the plants, as you tune into the animals, into the trees and all that, it's like, where is it that your being goes to to extract the realm from the ethers from the from the esoteric and to bring it back in back into this grounded state of being how is it that you do that for clients and and how can we more listeners learn to activate that within themselves that's a phenomenal question and i love it because right? Like there's a formula that you use. And this is what I love. I love hanging out in that spot where science meets spirituality. And the ancients knew this stuff. They just knew it. They didn't need science to back it up. They just knew it. And finally, we're at a point in history where science is actually backing it up. Mm -hmm. So when we're working uh, with shamanic practice, we're working with ancient earth based energies and ancient earth based practices. And you're going to hear drums, you're going to hear a repetitive beat of a drum and a rattle. And then when people when I work with people on shamanic journeys, I also infuse plant music, right, because of these frequencies that are delivering packets of data to our energetic field. But what's happening, let's just talk scientifically for a second, when we have that rhythm, and it's a repeating rhythm, it actually affects our brain. It affects our neurology and it puts our brain waves into a different state. And it puts us in that altered state, right? Like the one that people try to achieve using different plant medicines or synthetic drugs. And the thing is, is you don't have the same access and the same uh, depth when you're um, substituting something else for it, right? There's nothing wrong. I have no judgment on, on any of it, but we it's best when we can learn how to get there in a natural way. Yeah. And there's merit to all the other ways too, right? But there's this organic aspect that happens and it it triggers us on the physical and on the spiritual level. And so we're able to incorporate these aspects that we know along with that imagination, right? Where you're being guided on a journey and you're being, you're being shown certain things, you're being taken down a path and you're going through this way. That's also affecting the neurology in like hypnosis. It's taking you deeper. It's taking you deeper. So when I take you, I'm taking you deeper into the forest. We're going deeper into the neurology. And then from there, it becomes the springboard 
into the etheric realms where mm-hmm. we're able to actually meet with the, the wisdom keepers in whatever form that they are going to reveal themselves to us. So mm-hmm. what I love, especially working with shamanic practices is it engages that lower skeptical mind, right? It's like, okay, maybe I could do this. And I'm just, I'm just doing a guided meditation and I'm following along and pretty soon your brain puts you in the space, right? Cause of the drums and the rattle and the cadence of my voice. These yeah. aspects are doing this. And because I've called on your team and my team to be here on this journey together. So it allows us to go into a different place, to a different realm of possibility outside of that linear time where anything is possible when we've entered that quantum field. But when we're in our mundane world, we collapse on the most likely possibility instead of seeing all possibility that's there. So I personally am so gravitated to the earth energy medicine um, in all of its different forms because it resonates with me as a natural, as a part of nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I've had the experience through plant medicine and connecting naturally and much to my gratitude that my initial connections came naturally and not plants assisted. And so whenever they were finally plants assisted many years later, after going through these cosmic and very deep earthly realms where I saw beings and lights and all these other things that when I finally did go into the experimentation through the plant medicine, I knew that terrain so well, it was already intimate to me. And, and so reversing into that, um, help me attune to a place that uh, perhaps I get to see in a different vista, but the natural way of getting there, it's its not just, it was a pinnacle experience, but it's one that felt really fortalized through my being rather than the assisted version that gave me that quick hit. And then I would need another quick hit to get to a similar place as that it, it wasn't quite as organic and and they're all wonderful yes and there's a time and place for all of it yeah and, and set and setting and and all of those aspects there is just something when instead of being slingshotted into it yeah. where we organically unfold into it and and i you know i still i work with plant medicine in all different ways And so, like I said, there's a time and a place and it's intention, right? Because what happens oftentimes, especially like with, with the the music of the plants, right? Like in my package, I've got that aspect in there and you you get to experience that. One of the first things that I say is this isn't an up and out experience. Like so many times when we use plant medicine in a way, you know, to achieve those altered states, it's an up and out experience. And we want to have an in where we come in, down and in (laughs) experience because that allows integration. It allows an embodiment of the experience and the wisdom that comes through it, where it's a visceral point in our body versus again, the other way, just it's up and out. And so it doesn't always stick with us in the same way. And for again, me, I have no judgment on any of it. <laughs> yeah. For me, that aspect was probably activating something that was almost ready to activate. And perhaps it sped it up, but I had these other activations that happened naturally and awarenesses and embodiments really lent to that process becoming available rather than the other way around. Again, my personal experience and my understanding of it. So, so fascinating. And Maria, I, it's, it's, we, we can talk about the shamanic practices and the, and the shadow animals and the attunement to the plants all day long. And I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity. Uh, we do want to take live calls. So if you guys want to ask your personal question, raise your hand or type your question into the chat box. And as you're doing that, we want to go through Anna Maria's special offer because it's, it's really special what's being awakened here. So April has typed into the chat box. April, if you'll do it again, just so it's at the top of the chat box, uh, type in the link um, for the special offer. And again, package B, the second package includes a private reading with Anna Maria also, uh, but both are just activating both packages. So again, I hope you guys take advantage of it. Um, The link's in the chat box. You can also get into 
the special offer by typing into your web browser beyond the ordinary show.com forward slash Anna Maria 26. It'll take you to that same page. And Anna Maria, if you would, if you would guide us to uh, or through the special offer, it'd be wonderful. And I'll start putting participants that are wanting to come on video with their hands raised um, as, as participants while you're doing that. So Y'all can read, right? Like I already know that you guys, this is a smart bunch. It's really good. So I'm not going to go through everything, but the one, it's a collection of modules of really some of my favorite ways to connect with the natural realm and ways where I explain and give you information on how to do that. And I take you through different uh, protocols and activations to do that, but I want to focus on the very first module, right? Because it's multi-module. There's all sorts of stuff. There's plants, there's animals, there's seasons. You get to experience the music of the plants, right? And you get uh, a great 20 minute recording of the sage plant, which can clear your space and your auric field. But the very first module to me, like this package is so potent and powerful and it's so robust. It's got so much going on in it. But to me, this first module is really the crux of it. And what I've learned and what I've seen and how it came to be is people get excited about the possibilities, right? Like, oh, I'm a conscious creator. I can, you know, law of attraction. I've got all this stuff, all this power, all this ability to create from a different space. And I love animals and I love nature. And then we go out into the world and it's the same old, same old, you know, we're creating more of the same. And we don't understand because consciously and intellectually we're saying, I want to step into these new possibilities. I want to talk to animals. I want to talk to rocks. I want to talk to the elements. Uh, I want to talk to the unseen realms and have a two-way conversation, that dialogue back and forth. And we try and we try and it doesn't happen. And we start to think, well, either this is shenanigans, you know, and this can't happen at all, or we are, you know, we're broken and it's us, we can't do it. And so what came through to me is that huge amount of energy that we expend there on all of those levels, making ourselves wrong, trying so hard. And then we stay in this place where we stay small. See, it doesn't work for me. But what I learned was we're trying to build an expansive new possibility future on a fractured past. And it's not just in this lifetime, right? We're coming in into alignment and making high conscious decisions, but we've had multiple lifetimes. We've had multiple generations in our own lineage that have not been in alignment, that have not been in that space of the conscious collective, the unity consciousness. So we've taken from the earth, we've taken from the animals in an unfair exchange of energy and in cruel, inhumane ways over and over and over again, even to this day, depending on your level of whole life consciousness that you're living, you know, even our smart devices, right? We have to be so careful because they may be developed using horrible labor practices that are exploiting children and the earth. So we're up against it in a way that we have to take our consciousness to a whole different level. And so what came through for me as I was watching people struggle and I could see that they had really good intentions but they couldn't get past it, is we have to make amends. We have to, we have to step into understanding that, yeah, we're making good choices now or the best that we can, but that hasn't always been so in our family, even maybe in our own life or in past lives, especially those of us who are called to be the personal assistants of our dogs and our cats and our goats and our horses and our chickens. You know, it's real easy to be self-righteous about that, right? Like, oh, I've got this great profound love for animals and da 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 But we didn't always have that. Just as these infinite beings, we've had every experience. So most of us are working off some karma here, right? Like my dog gets to live like a king because I didn't treat animals well in every lifetime, right? And my family, certainly even in my lineage, even, you know, childhood memories did not treat animals well. And we need to step into a consciousness of that. And so I prepared these seven 
different journeys, these shamanic journeys, and you go through each of the realms and we make amends, we come into a consciousness um, of what what actually has transpired over the ages and how we have benefited and still benefit from it, right? And it allows us to really step into an empowered knowingness and a new possibility for the future. So we go through these different journeys so that you can clear and activate your connections, your alliance with each of these aspects of the natural realm. And from there, then we can start to create that alone. Just going through the first module is going to shift things for you in a big way. And then we're able to go into the other modules where we talk about what can you physically do and energetically do to recalibrate your energy. Now that you've cleaned, you know, we're starting, it's like in a relationship. If we don't get clean and clear, right, on what's working, what's not working, we're, we're just going to keep creating the same thing. So once we get to this space with the natural realm and the energetics of the natural realm, we can do it differently. And then we can lean into the seasonal energy, right? We just passed the autumn equinox just last week in the Northern hemisphere. If you're in the Southern hemisphere, you just stepped into your spring equinox, but this, the earth herself she puts out a different vibration, a different frequency at those equinox and solstice points. And it's been measured. And what it's doing, it's giving information to all living things. And we're a living thing. And so it helps us shift in what the energy of the planet is going through and how we can be in more natural rhythm with that. So I have a module on calibrating your energy and understanding what it is. I have a module on working with the seasonal energy. You get a recording on each of the seasons, the lessons that they teach us, how we can be in more harmony with those seasons and where to focus our direction and our intention and our attention. Because so often we feel scattered, like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Even if you just follow the direction of the seasons, you've got a three month instruction manual there of what to be focused on, what to be leaning into. At that point, we can take it even deeper, right? And we can go into the plant music and I explain how this whole thing works, how the machine works. I give you that um, recording that you can work with. I actually take you through an activation to receive these harmonics so that you're getting it at a different level other than just the intellectual knowledge of it. We also go into... Um, I just lost my place. Um, we have a live group animals. session. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the shadow animal. And we did talk about that. So we get to go through the shadow animal information, right? So that you can shift your energy and be with this in a different way. And as with, you know, all of my courses, it's so important that we have a live group session, right? So that you take in this information and then you come to the group and, you know, if you have questions about the course content, that's where I can answer it. Because if you have questions, other people have questions and right, like those are the places where I do intuitive readings too. So, you know, a little mini reading, it's huge for folks and it gives you a place to direct your energy. Normally during those readings, they'll be like, Hey, check out, you know, the module with the plant music or check out the shadow animal, uh, information to take you deeper of course the last part of that is the aspect with the private session right and to me that's what brings it full circle and when we're in that energy i can read in to the plant the animal the mineral the elemental that's there to support you and where you can focus your energy moving forward with the course content and applying it to your life directly to get the most mileage out of this to get the most practical application and experience so that it moves from just intellectual information to this visceral experience that you have where you know that you've made a connection and you have allies in the natural realm. Hmm. This is so fantastic. Every offer that you bring on to this show is just so, so expanding. And it's just the capacity to ground it in and to embody and to use it as a practical element um, 
through our natural awareness, not that we're forcing it, but it's as we utilize it, it just becomes part of us, um, which is so fantastic, including traveling into the shamanic realms and accessing it. And again, it's part of our organic nature and having you as a guide, Anna Maria, who you embody it so beautifully and share from it from, from your own personal experience. And that's, for me, the best way to really have those ripples go out to others is it's just extraordinary. So this is amazing. Well, that's the piece, right? Yeah. Like I am the poster child for if I can do this, anyone can do this, right? Like I didn't come out or maybe I came out of the womb with the remembrance, but I forgot it quickly in the family chaos that I was dropped into that I chose, right? That actually helped me tune into the energy in a whole new way. None of our experiences are ever wasted and is as much trauma and drama it created in me an ability to tune into the energy. And then when I was able to refocus that, and instead of just feeling highly sensitive to everything, but to learn the mechanics of energy and to work with them, it shifted everything. And I was able to shift my life from this big old shit show into something that is beautiful. And it's more than I would have ever dreamed would be possible. And then to feel that, desire that drive to help others remember because the trees the animals uh the the landscapes they have all said that it's crucial that the humans remember and they're waiting on us to remember because when we remember this connection we move through our lives in a very different way and we interact with all life force energy in a different way it steps us into that unity consciousness and again when a very small percentage of us step into that it shifts and it shifts the whole collective experience and we've done this same old same old now for eons and it's time for us to remember and nature wants to help us remember mm, so beautiful Again, y'all, the package is available there, uh, package A, with the recordings and the live Q&A session. And the mini readings are available there, the, the plant music, the shamanic journeys, the, the shadow animal, um, the seasons, it's the awakening, your natural capabilities. It's just, it's, it's a full on package for $97, uh, 30 day money back guarantee. And then add this individual session, the one-on-one -on -one with Anna Maria for another hundred dollars. If you choose that, uh, which I highly recommend that you do, um, that's available there as well. So choose either package A or B, uh, buy one for a friend, dive in and get into the remembrance, get into the calibration that we're all experienced, even in other levels. I, Anna Maria, for me, it's like, Okay, I've had access at a certain level, but it keeps expanding and it keeps growing. It's like, what? There's more of this. It's like, okay. And it's just, there's this new discoveries that are so exciting within me um, and sometimes challenging, but thank goodness for the challenges because I get to, it's, I really see them as just these initiations into what else is possible um, yes. so rather than a struggle. It's like, okay this is happening for me. What's on the other side of this, but let me be with this now so that I don't bypass and, and necessarily have to come back for a reframe because it's not necessary. So again, the way that Anna Maria teaches is going to allow for that level of integration and you just progress so beautifully with it. And again, with the one-on-one -on -one session, the insights that are given, um, very direct, but very loving also. And with tools and, um, processes that are available to you again to further awaken and to integrate and have relationship with the elements with nature with the trees with yourself with the animals um so again i hope you take advantage of the special offer the link again is in the chat box and um have fun with those with those modules and with the readings and Anna maria with that let's open up to q a yeah my favorite yeah. part <laughs> me too i love the q a so let's start with kate Kate, welcome to the show. And everybody, find your unmute button, please. And I'll ask you to unmute when, when I call on you. Hi, Kate. Hi, thank you, John. Hi, Anna Maria. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me what, um, uh, I guess you call them wisdom keepers, what beings are out there, whether it's animals, minerals. Sounds like there's, there's quite a few are out there supporting me. 
Yeah. So I have to tell you, the first one that came through is actually uh, from the elements, right? And it's the element of fire that's here for you right now. And this feels very much related to the sacral chakra. Um, and it feels like if you, they're calling you to do like a fire ceremony and this is beautiful, right? Like, cause we think big bonfires, right. Or even little outdoor fires, but you can do, um, this fire ceremony with even just a candle because you're connecting with it. And now we have Sammy, the cat showing up. So thank you, Kate, because Sammy doesn't show up for everybody kind of like Astro can do sometimes, but, uh, this is related to your creativity and your ability to step into your co-creatorship. So I would do a fire ceremony um, around what needs to be burned away that's keeping you from your, your creativity. And it's not just like to draw a picture, right? Like they're talking about creating in your life. So where is stuff not working for you and you're needing to create a new possibility? Connecting with the element of fire is gonna be huge for you in doing that. Thank you so much. And I just, I love seeing your animals come into the photo. Mine's asleep next to me. So thank you. Yay. <laughs> mm, so wonderful. Kata, I wonder what animal are you connected to? I'm just curious what you intuitively are drawn to. Um, other than dogs, which mine's right, right there. Um, throughout my life, it's been wolf. Mm. But I do, I do light a candle almost every day uh, before meditation. So I, I love candles. So. Yeah. So, and so really going intentionally in with the element of fire itself, right? As if it's a being, uh, this is where they're trying to take you in to that natural realm, which is funny, right? Because I asked all the questions for the other ones and they just wanted you focused on fire. So who am I to argue with them? <laughs> Ooh, right. Fire is a being. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Kate, for saying that. And again, I wanted to ask what was coming up naturally, wouldn't you? Because a lot of times what's so primary for us, we we look for even more mystical when it's right in front of us. And right. so I love that Anna Maria's translation for you into like just what's right there, the treasure, the preciousness that's alive that you're already aware of um, that has messages for you. And that'll take you actually into even more mystical by empowering that. So we use what we have and more is given. Use what we have and more is given. This is wonderful. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Mm. All right, let's go to our next caller. Andrew, let's go to you now. Hello. Hello, John and Anna. My two of one of my most favorite people. Great to see you again. <laughs> um, I am finally getting over uh, the accident that I had last year, just the post-concussion headaches. And... I'm being guided to move to Montreal, uh, and I'm just wondering what can uh, help with fueling my soul with regards to work, because in the past, I was going for jobs that just helped me survive, and I want to know what, like, you know, to get more into flow. Yes. Well, it's so interesting. There's a couple things that are coming through really strong for you. Um, and that uh, the first one is the grounding, the earthing, right? Like being out barefoot on the earth for at least 15 to 30 minutes as often as you can, because it's going to help your body uh, rebalance some of those uh, places, especially the brain, right? Like, cause your brain has had to refigure out things from being knocked around so much. And so that's going to really source you on multiple levels that they're showing me. The other thing is uh, actually, you know, a direction, right? The direction uh, of the east. So just like we were saying, fire as a being, the direction itself as a wisdom keeper. And that direction of the east talks about new possibilities. And it's interesting because before you even said you were moving, they dropped in. This is going to be about the direction of the east, these new possibilities. And when we're working with the direction of the east, we typically correlate that at least in my traditions, with the element of air. And that element of air helps us get out of our head, right? Like the thinking mind that in the past was like, I just need a job, give me a J-O-B to pay these bills and you know it'll be fine. But now you're in a space and because of all the work that you've done to create new possibilities, things that are more in alignment with who you truly be. And so calling on this, uh, element of air, this direction of the east to bring in these new possibilities 
while you're grounding and connecting and giving your body, right? Like the physical healing, there's documentation on this that happens just from grounding, from earthing itself. So I would go outside, take some deep breaths, right? Because the breath takes us, that's the element of air within us, life force energy, right in our body. And when we take the deep breaths, it actually allows us to what, you know, the buzzword is drop into the heart space, which is actually creating that heart coherence. You slow down the breath. It tells the body you're safe. We can connect to all these other channels, all this other information. And it actually takes us, transports us into the quantum field so that you can choose to call in that which you're desiring to call in. So they're definitely um, getting you synced up with earth energy to help amplify what you're calling in. Wow, ironically, I'm going, uh, it's going east because I'm in Toronto and I'll be going east to, to, to Montreal. So <laughs> I'll be going in the east direction and so west I'll be going east. <laughs> keep, keep facing nice that way. <laughs> yeah. And Andrew, thank you for your technical support at the beginning, because I knew something wasn't right, but I could not figure out what it was. And so your comments were so helpful in us dialing this in so we could actually interact together. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. It's great to see you. Now, we've got some great questions that are coming in through the Q&A in the chat also, and I, I want to get into them here and then we'll take some more live callers as well. Okay. I'm going to go into Denise first. And she's it's a little bit longer of a, a question, but she writes, I'd love some guidance with my animals so I know a reflection of things in my life. We're in a house we're ready to move from. Long story, it's long story be, being here in this rental, we do a lot of work with the land. Our contract is done and I feel that now we're ready to leave. We have four horses, two cat, two dogs and a cat. One pony has foot issues. My dog has a leg issue that's not healing, heading into three months and some digestive issues, and a little dog with anxiety and biting his feet, et cetera. Seems like there's a theme here. I would love any insight that you may have to help shift our group and perhaps also what the animals may be trying to tell me. Right. Well, first of all, brilliant listening. So wise to know that they're trying to show us something and animals act as messengers, right? That's where that shadow animals module comes from, right? The animals as messengers and the ones that are showing us things that we don't want to see, right? They're hurt, they're injured, something like that. And we know, again, everything is energy. It's so funny. You guys might hear Astros outside howling right now and you guys might hear that. So I'm just going to let you guys um, receive some sonic frequencies, clearing that throat <laughs> chakra, right? And Astro's mission is to help people stand in their power. So it's interesting that he would start howling, Denise, here when we start talking about this and mm -hmm. about you, you know, and what your animals are showing you. So we know right away because Astro got involved in a big way here. That it's about you standing in your power because it's this inability for you to move forward. Again, as the animals are showing you, these leg issues are about moving forward. And our animals, you know, when they're in the wild, they use all their energy to find food, not get eaten, you know, find a mate, things like that. When they live with us, we take care of that. So they shift their energy to focus on our energy field. And part of the contract is they agree to take energy on for us, energy that we can't, won't, or do not know how to transmute. And there's no off switch, right? Like you can't say, don't do that. It, well, you can say whatever you want, but they won't <laughs> because they're committed, right? Like they're these little furry embodied guides and masters that are helping us remember the truth about who we be, not the limitations that we've accepted and taken on as our own. So this part about, again, I would, I would start working on your throat chakra to be able to really speak the truth that's coming in, right? You get these great hits and then it hits your power center and it gets a little smaller and it can't quite get out. So I would do some throat chakra clearing to move that, to clear that. And I would look at where are the places that you are moving forward in your life? you know, the aspects of your life that you are moving forward and the aspects that you just can't seem 
to get that forward action, that forward movement. And when once we start to bring that awareness in, the animal can release that. And I've had it happen time and time and time again, so many times for myself and clients, where just coming into the awareness will even shift laboratory results that they're waiting on, right? And that's what, when it gets fun, when we get to work in the energy in a brand new way. So thank your animals, right? You can't get them to not do it. But when we match the energetics with the physical, right? Natural ways to bring them back into balance, we really see some forward traction and movement in the energy. So good, I'm sending you good vibes for moving forward. Really, um, call on Astro as well to help you stand in your power so that you can get balanced and in alignment and move forward in a big way. I love that. I also, as you're talking about this, Santa Maria, I can't help but to see it's like they've been doing so much work with the land that a cord cutting ceremony of gratitude and being done is also a step forward because if the animals are, could, could be saying you're entangled with the land, you're not letting go, you're invested in something that's ready to release and it's like that that ball and chain, if you will, that won't let yeah, you Yeah, absolutely. And even another aspect is ask the land to help connect you to the new space yes. because all of that nature, oh yeah, we heard you, we did, yes. <laughs> um, he was just checking. Um, so that space, it knows you. It knows you at a very intimate level. And so for you to ask that land to help connect you with the new land where you're going to be sourced, where you're going to collaborate, where you're going to be in alliance, it can. Remember, there's this whole underground network where everything's connected and then the energy where everything's connected. So I love, John, getting that hit on that. It's about um, you know letting that land source you in moving on to the next aspect, into the next level, into your next place. Yeah, uh, so good. I love this. All right, let's go on to another caller. Okay, I'm going to take another question that came in the Q&A, then we'll go to some live callers, y'all, because this question is so relevant for all of us. And so Cheryl, thank you. Um, Cheryl writes, all of this is true, but I have no idea how to get rid of these limiting beliefs once and for all. If you could shed some light on this for me, it'd be wonderful, because I'm just confused why this won't shift. Right. And so two things that come to mind, that first module, right, going through those activation journeys, those shamanic journeys, where we clear out the past residue due from you, your embodiment this time, your family's lineage, your past lives, we got to clear that stuff out. Otherwise, we're going to keep ending up in the same place. It's going to feel like we're spinning our wheels. The second thing is the private session, right? Where we can look specifically. What happens when we go into that session, this one in particular, right? Because it's different than, than the other ones. We come in, we go into a a breathing exercise to get us in that space, right? My team knows I'm here, I'm ready to work. And the truth is they usually start whispering in my ear before we even get to that point. And so we go through that and then I bring through these different aspects, right? The, um, the animal, the plant, the mineral, the elemental, uh, these different aspects that are here to source you. And that actually sets the container. And it typically even helps to answer some questions that you came into the session with. But just like we only have a few minutes with each person here and the information can be really shifting. Imagine having the 30 minutes where I'm totally focused on you and we can look at where you're getting stuck. And for you, I would say, go through the module one first because that's going to undo a lot of this. That's going to bring some clarity in. It's going to shift your field so that I can look in and see it in a different way. And then they may send you back and have you do a couple other things, but you're going to have actual action items, ways to be with the energy in a different way where I'm going to be able to see where you're getting tripped up. But I'm telling you, part of this is due to these energetics of not having a clean foundation. We think we do, right? Because we, we're pure of heart, we're in a high intention, but we're on top of this broken foundation of our modern humanity that we have to get clear on, shift, activate, and then we can move forward. And that's when we apply the mind management aspects that I give you, you know, in your private session, we can look at those pieces. What does that really mean? How do we come up against these limiting beliefs? Because sometimes the residue do, sometimes the residue do is simply just a habit. 
that we've leaned into and we don't even, we're not even conscious of it. And I can help you see the ways that we are staying in those limiting beliefs. So yeah. it's about being honest. It's about making amends, stepping into the activation, and then working with the mind to create that well-worn path in the trajectory of what we want, instead of continuing to create what we don't want. April, if you don't mind, put the link for the special offer in the chat box again. And what I have to say about the special offer, as you subscribe, go through it, actually do it. <laughs> It's, this isn't just provided for you guys to spend your money or to churn something as an impulse buy. It's what I bring onto the show and what Anna Maria is sharing through here. It's effective. It's changed her life around. It's changed her client's life around. And when you devote to a practice and go in and listen to its wisdom and embody it and have relationship with it, you'll feel the shifts and actualize the shifts that are intended through the modules but you have to have a relationship with it. So those of you who are participating, go in and, and allow it, it's wisdom to have a relationship with you and, and activate you and, and go through um, these intelligences that live inside of you that are just waiting to pop. And these yeah, it's the, the, yeah. the folks who have worked with me and ha have found the effectiveness, you know, it, it's a high rate, right? Like, and it's very organic because one person has that and then they share it with somebody else who, you know, resonates with similar. My, every marketing strategist that's ever looked at my business is blown away at it. They're like, we've never seen so much organic growth without SEO, without all of this other stuff and algorithms and paying for things. It just, they, they can't figure it out. They, it, and I'm like, well, first of all, I'm working on a whole different vibration. I'm working different layers of metrics than just what you can see and what you can measure here. But what they say is I explain these complex topics in easy to understand ways that you can apply and you can leave your session with me and start to see shifts immediately in what's showing up. And when something shows up that you were like, ah, I don't want that, right? Like, what do we do? And what we typically do is we stay focused on what we don't want. We tell that same old story and it's literally beating the drum, putting our brain into alliance and alignment with what we don't want instead of shifting that and being honest, like, this is how I feel. This is what I've called in. You know, I always like to use our bank statements as a good testimony to this. So we call in abundance. We're all excited. We did the activation and we're calling in abundance. And then we get an NSF, you know, notice from the bank. Like, <laughs> not only do you not have more money, you actually have less money now because we took some of the money you already didn't have, which is a racket. <laughs> but then we go into oh my gosh, see, it's not working. See, this didn't, this didn't work. But what happened is you created a new possibility. The 3D provides some feedback. And instead of stepping into the new possibility, you go into the old story. You got to stop yourself and go, oh, isn't this interesting? I just did those activations and, and this old stuff showing up. Oh, perhaps this is an opportunity for me to release that. We think it's showing up because it tells us we suck, right? We think the feedback is you suck, you're doing it wrong, it doesn't work for you. But what it's doing is it's giving you an opportunity to stand in your truth. So that NSF notice shows up and you say, oh boy, that just brought up a lot of fear. I'm also angry because the activation didn't work. And what we can say instead is I'm feeling that here's where I'm feeling this. Oh, I remember feeling this, you know, when my parents fought about money, right? Or when my mom was never home because she had to work three jobs just to keep us afloat. And that's all coming up, but we don't look at that. We go into the story instead. And once we can feel that, oh, I feel that in my stomach, right? Or I feel it in my chest or, oh my God, it feels like a lump in my throat or it feels like there's a vice on my head. Then we can stand in our truth. This is what the 3D is telling me. I got no money. I got less than no money. But my truth is I'm abundant. I'm in a, I live in abundance and I live in an abundant universe. And so I'm going to release that. 
And then we beat the drum of that abundance of living in an abundant universe. And when the next thing comes up that tells us differently, we go through the rinse and repeat, right? We rinse and repeat, we do the same thing. And then we feel in and you've got this, maybe you need to play the plant music to help you remember, but you've got access to all this. Maybe you need to go through one of the shamanic activation journeys that are gonna source you in moving forward. But there's tools that you have and access to, to keep coming back to. That's the rinse and repeat piece. You, like John said, it's not, this isn't just a money-making scheme, right? Like this is divine wisdom that's been channeled through and given to me that I've applied in my own life before I presented it to everyone else. I'm not here to sell anyone a bill of goods, but I'm here to tell you, I've changed my life. This is how I did it. If you want to do it, here's, here's the steps, <laughs> here's the modules. And you go through them and it activates you on all these different levels. Some of it is the intellectual aspect. Some of it is the energetic remembrance. And some of it is, oh, there's a different possibility than what I've been playing out. But we're able to assimilate it into our life in a whole different way when we partner with the natural realm. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Again, y'all, the link is in the chat box. You can get to it there. Uh, package A with the recordings and the live calls, $97. Uh, so Q&A, short readings there. And then to add the one-on-one -on -one session to those modules is $197. Two payment options on both packages as well. So again, y'all take advantage of it. And Maria, I want to take another live caller. It's I want, I want to call on all of you guys. It's just, I, I do, and we're running short on time. Um, but Roberta, you're just sticking out like, a. it's like, I have to call on you. So welcome. Oh, hi. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Okay. Yeah. So as someone who's been following Anna Maria for six or seven years, I even did her long course twice. I can oh. totally attest to everything that she's offering. Absolutely. And um, Anna Maria, I am feeling strongly to move away from the property that has given me sanctuary um, within the next 10 months. And I really hear you about asking the land here. Thank you so much for that reminder to go out and talk to the trees and the animals that are here about helping me network into the next place. But I'd also like to know if you're picking up anything in particular that I should attend to, because you're always spot on. Yeah, you know, as I'm feeling that, um, it's feeling very much like, right, take it to the trees, go out there, put that out there. Um, but it, I'm gonna take a breath because they're explaining it in a way that is not the way I thought we were gonna go with that. So <laughs> let me just for a second. So go to the land, do your ceremony, right? So right now we're in the autumn season. So it's about taking stock, right? Like what has worked, what has sourced you in this property that you're in now, and where are the places where you needed more, right? Like maybe more interaction, more so, you know, more connection with, with other humans, like-hearted humans, not just more people, but those true heart-based connections with folks really take stock, use this energy to do this. And I would be working uh, with the new moon. So you've got what, we're at the, the the last quarter moon here. So what, another week or two before the new moon, but I would be working with that moon energy as well to set out the intention uh, when you're working with the land to send that out. And then the other aspect uh, that's coming through, I'm really feeling this happening for you in the late spring, early summer yep. time. So then it becomes that aspect of, uh, working with the direction, right, of the East for that new possibility and getting out of your head. Because, right, like, we're like, okay, this is what I can afford for rent. Well, this is where I have to live. I call bullshit on that, right? Like, we don't put, how is not our job? And we don't put conditions on that. You feel into what you need to source you. And you're actually really brilliant at this. You're just really being a good proxy for me to say that to everybody else. Um, but to step into the possibility of creating something where there's not, right? Like I've done that before too, where I moved to a place where people were like, you're crazy. You're never going to find something in that price range with all the land that you're talking about <laughs> that you need to live. And I've always been able to find that one place that goes against all possibilities. And it's by connecting with the land, thanking the land, asking it to help me call in that next divine space. So 
you are a brilliant goddess at working with all of this and riding the waves. So I would mostly work on the taking stock piece about what's worked and what you need. Uh, you already know how to call in all the good stuff that you need, but there's those pieces, right, that aren't quite there that you need to source yes. you in this next move. And that's the taking stock part. And so if you can really feel into it, right, and remember, how isn't your job? So we're like, oh, I want to be around, you know, these high vibrational heart-based folks. Well, how the hell am I going to find them? As soon as you catch yourself saying that, how is not my job? Just say yes, Yes, please. What would that feel like to be in a community like that? And then feel into, because we've all been at the other end of like some of the spiritual wackadoodles. Well, I don't want to be around that, right? Like I need the groundedness in there too. And so we want to feel into that, but we don't want to shut off the flow, but we want to notice, oh, there's a contrast there, right? And it's like a filter, a search filter that we're using. So I want this heart-based connection and, you know, less wackadoodle and you know yes please what would that feel like for me okay thank you so much and the timing i'm committed to here till the early spring so that fits really well thank you so much lots of love to you and thank you john oh roberta thank you for for that question because i am personally going through that transition as well i know a lot of people that are going into these places where we're evolving energetically from our physical plane and we're being called into other type of relationships, whether it be our housing, our careers, our personal relationships, or all of them at the same time. So to attune into what Anna Maria just spoke about with Roberta and the why and, and not the how, but the alignments and also taking stock of what is there and then what else is calling in. And yeah. again, the shamanic process in that can be really powerful as well. Because we're, we are in this big evolution of, of creating from a new where we don't know. But in the shamanic realms, there's a lot of information that's being shared in our attunement to the, the plants and the animals. Also, there's guidance that we have access to without having the full answers, but as a step-by-step -step journey in the migration of the seasons. So, wonderful. Wonderful. Again, y'all, it's a phenomenal call. I can go on forever with, uh, with Anna Maria. Um, we'll post the replay a little bit later this evening and sending out in the email. And of course, you can access Anna Maria's special offer. The link's in the chat box, or you can go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Anna Maria 26, and it'll take you to that same special offer page. And with the Anna Maria, it's I'm actually guided to ask you if there's a blessing or, or something that you want to end today's call with. That is so perfect. Yes. Let's, let's do this. Let's go in um, and close your eyes if you're able to. And right. We want to take those deep breaths because we're using our physical body to make these mystical connections. So those deep breaths inform our body that we're ready to do that, that we're available to do that. And it drops us into the heart space, which activates that heart coherence, which creates that portal into that quantum realm. And so from this space here, we call in this deeper understanding, realization, and actualization of our profound connections with the natural realm. And that this is our birthright to reclaim this, to recall the wisdom that has been lost, suppressed, and hidden from us for so long. We call on all of our faculties in all within our physical body and within our energetic fields to allow that connection to take place in a new and profound way. And any lower vibrating thoughts, feelings, energies, or emotions that may have come up during our time together for healing, we lovingly turn those over to the light for that healing and transmutation. And all of us are filled up with high vibrational frequencies of love, peace, courage, clarity, and bliss, allowing that to be assimilated on all the levels, all the directions, all the dimensions, creating new neural pathways that allow you to sense, experience those 
connections with the natural realm in a powerful way like never before. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Calling all of your energy back to you. I'm calling my energy back to me and all of us landing in infinite love and gratitude to all the high level beings of love, light, power, and service, all of the natural realm, our higher selves and the divine for everything that came through here and will continue to come through and unfold for you over the next seven days. And so much deep gratitude for allowing me to be the conduit through which these messages flow. It's such a high honor. I love being able to speak on behalf of the natural realm and I'm humbled by this possibility and opportunity. Thank you all so much. Thank mm. you, John. Thank you, Anna Maria. Blessings to you and blessings to everybody on the call. Thank you for being here and we look forward to seeing you on the next live call. Have a great evening.